right okay what's up welcome episode 23 planet xbox podcast doing a little quick uh sound check here uh man addict can you say something for me i'm here i'm here awesome that's good to hear uh man all right good to be back uh second saturday in a row since uh the return um episode 23 planet xbox podcast I am your host, Best Buy Kiss Move, co-host, Gaming Attic, aka Lord Attic. What is up? Doing pretty good, man. Uh, I think I'm gonna see when I play podcasts. Usually, I like to find like something mindless that I can do on a game that I need done. So uh, I think uh, today I'm going to be just randomly grinding the um, the characters on uh, over uh, Octopath Traveler Two. Because my characters are so strong, so what I do is I just put like the strongest character, uh, the weakest character with all the strongest characters, and just grind that person. And usually, it just I just press X because my people are so strong they'll eventually kill them. No, oh, fair enough, fair enough. I'm trying to um, trying to do. That. I pl- I started playing a uh, uh, Avatar, um, gorgeous game, beautiful. Um, it's by Ubisoft. It looks great. Uh, it to me, just a long story short, uh, it's literally Far Cry in the Avatar world. Uh, imagine being a giant, um, with pretty much Far Cry gameplay and a beautiful, a beautiful, uh, Avatar uh, skin and world and whatnot. Um, tell me that the uh, fighting little humans isn't funny. Like, <laughs> yeah, like it, it, it is, it, it is uh, funny. So they, it's a good thing they got like the mechs and stuff in it, but the different abilities you get, you get to start like punching them and they go flying and whatnot. It's, uh, it's cool. I, I, I like what they did with it uh, so far. So I'll probably be dabbling into that. Um, there's a, there was a lot of uh, good uh, game pass drops um, too. Um, I downloaded it. Uh, yeah, Remnant, both of them, actually, one and two, because I've never beaten the first one. I think I tried it because uh, I think they had a trial available on, um, I think, on uh, when it came out, like the first one. Uh, so I'm going to try to play through uh, both of them. That's assuming if I, I, I like it. Um, there's, uh, let's see, World War Z. Um, I want to try, I want to play that with my um, with my son. I think I'm going to try to get through that. Over the next uh, couple of days, I downloaded it. Um, there's uh, some good, uh, the Game Awards sells. Immortals is on sale for 30 bucks. Um, but I, I got a feeling that's going to be in Game Pass fairly soon. Um, so I haven't pulled the trigger on that. I still got to get through Assassin's Creed. I haven't beaten anything <clears throat> really significant at all since, uh, since Spider-Man uh, 2. But... Um, Let's get into some of the Patreon questions before we uh, get into the meat and potatoes of the show. So <clears throat> the first question comes from uh, Young Brib. He says, what was the biggest surprise announcement uh, for you guys at the Game Awards? And what's your most anticipated game going into the new year? Still can't believe we actually got a release date for Black Myth Wukong. Thought that game would never come out. Addict. Probably God of War, that DLC, because um, I already knew the Blade thing was there, uh, so that didn't really surprise me too much. But the God of War thing definitely surprised me. Hello. Yeah, no, I'm here. I was just at the, yell at the kids, <laughs> but uh, I think uh, I'll be right back. I've I didn't get to watch the Game Awards. In this totality, I like I had a moment to myself and I was able to catch it on my phone, but I think I caught most of the important reveals. But obviously for me, um, my favorite uh, thing, Black Myth Wukong, obviously it looks awesome. It has a release date coming out at the uh, end of the summer, or, well, middle of summer, August. Um, I'm going to say, though, uh, Blade was the biggest surprise for me. Um, because I didn't think, and we see, and this is going to be probably the bulk of the episode, but Blade was the biggest surprise only because it's a, it's a Marvel IP and it's being done by, you know, Arcane and, and, and Xbox. Studios. So it, it's some, it's answering some of the questions that 
some are some of the demands that some of us as Xbox fans have been hoping for for them to tap that, that into I've that. I've been harassed over yeah. in the past. Yeah, for them to tap into go, that go. Disney Marvel stuff. Go look at my uh, my superhero videos. Mm. Like it, it, it's just full of people saying, "Addict, they don't look. They don't need anything." To be honest with you, but what I will say. It's just because you personally feel like they don't need something doesn't mean they don't need it. You know, yeah. Microsoft it was is putting was putting themselves in a situation where, you know, right now I would say it's a lot better than it used to be because I would say Marvel's fallen from grace a little bit, but it's still extremely popular. The only movies doing anything in, in the movie theater is Marvel movies. Now, obviously, here recently it's been kind of bad, but. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, these movies are doing are they are sometimes doing billion of do- billions of dollars in sales. It's mm-hmm. like and the fact that, you know, let's say that if Microsoft never I mean if Marvel never bounces back, that's one thing. But who says that, you know, with the new CEO and, and the new direction they're taking where, you know, you don't see these companies where you see them start to turn stuff around. And then let's say Marvel does get back on track and, and PlayStation throws out a, a Wolverine. And it, what to say that doesn't lead to a, to a daredevil. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's just like, they had to respond. They had to make sure that they had some form of that game because, you know, if you're the only person in the, in the gaming industry that does not only one that counts, obviously Nintendo, even Nintendo had um Marvel ultimate Alliance for the switch. Remember? So it's just like they they needed it. They did because there is a it's like I said there is a scenario in this where Microsoft or uh PlayStation makes a like a Marvel Cinematic Universe in in in, in their ecosystem. And you mean to tell me that it's going to be good if that does happen if Microsoft's not part of it? You know what I'm saying? Like Yeah, man. I really feel like, I also feel like uh, Insomniac tease what they can do with the incre- uh, with an incredible Hulk video game by letting you play as Venom and Spider Man. Their, their gameplay mechanics seem like they would be awfully familiar with each other. I don't know if you got that vibe when you were playing as Venom. Yeah, and that that's my thing. It's just like look, like I here's my thing, and maybe maybe me and you disagree. And I know this is probably going on a little bit of a, a side trail. And that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um. I personally feel like what's best for Game Pass isn't necessarily what's best for Xbox. You know, I feel like a lot of people go on here and, you know, I say, you know, is Blade an exclusive? They say it doesn't matter. It's in Game Pass. I don't agree. Blade being in Game Pass is good for you as the consumer because it brings value to the service you pay for. But it does bring no value to the Xbox platform because Game Pass is also on PC. Mm-hmm. hell they even want to put game pass on playstation so at, at the end of the day you know you can say what you want but that that needs to be an exclusive it, it, you know yeah, we, especially you mean to tell me that there's a, a potential that blade could be on a platform that has wolverine and spider-man exclusive how is that good for xbox that might not it might be good for you because you don't have to pay seventy dollars for yeah. it. We, but we, we're gonna, the- we gonna get to that argument for sure after these okay. uh, Patreon questions. I think we got a lot to talk about that. Uh, second question comes from my truck nuts. He says, "Are we getting that hardest difficulty Hellblade stream from you, Smooth?" Side note: Shout out to Planet Xbox Weapon Wheel Podcast and After Dark Crew. Y'all been getting a brother through the day with hella great content. Hashtag Dickles. You guys have like a lot of of coverage on that, on that uh, after dark. I'd be looking on there sometimes because because of this show, I, I'm sub to um, the Patreon on Weapon Well, mm-hmm. and I'd be seeing that that after dark be like like six hours long sometimes. That's crazy. Um, I, I can I can survive a podcast uh, four plus I'll hours. I'll pop on there and, and talk my shit for a couple mm. minutes and then pop off, but, you know, it's just like, geez, man, like, you know, the, the, the community's definitely getting good engagement conversations. I will say that. Yeah. If there's a hardest difficulty for Hellblade 2, I'd probably do it, but I don't think they're going to do it because Hellblade, I don't recall the first one having like a crazy difficulty. Um, I don't see why there would be the combat in the first game was very limited. Um, in this case, you know, I don't know where they're going with this game. Um, 
even though I'm impressed by how the game looks and it looks like they're taking it up a notch, it still feels to me the game still looks uh like you know it, uh, still like it's going to be similar to the first one in terms of like the whole combat breakdown, puzzle breakdown um and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, it's just that what I'm hoping for Hellblade 2 is a little bit more of a free flowing game not like a self-contained scripted combat and stuff like that i want it to just be a uh, all-out action game um and so you, you you want a god of war yeah yeah i kind of want to i want to kind of uh, uh you know xbox version of god of war uh to a degree but the thing is i don't actually want to play god of war god of war because uh like that was a uh, it's a like it's just too much um next question comes from uh uh Alex a uh, Jiggy Durag this is what I'm wearing at uh, he says uh when is planet xbox getting its own intro song um which uh hey I I I mean I don't know you could do one for us or I can or I can or I can make one I haven't really thought much to it only because I have like a, a standard intro um and because uh I can I guess it were it's still possible I was, was going to say because we don't really go live i probably doesn't warrant one but i guess it doesn't really matter you can still have one and it makes sense right um hey maybe soon the second question says i need an answer to each what feature in each category made you go oh nah we in the future controller first person shooter console action adventure multiplayer mode which one you uh which of these questions which of each category which controller made you feel like you were in the future added which first person shooter made you feel like you were in the future which console which action adventure game and which multiplayer All right, let's just do one at a time for yeah. right now mm -hmm. uh controller i have to say the dual sense like i actually feel like i like the uh i don't have a an xbox one controller i mean series x controller in here mm -hmm. i like that but i like the feel of the dual sense like i i do like the feel of the dual sense Okay. Um, as far as the controller, what controller did I thought was extremely uh, revolutionary? Um, I guess... Uh, I guess it... Hey, maybe it is probably the dual sense. I don't think any of the controllers... No, actually, technically the Kinect. The Kinect was probably... The, if, I, if, we, if I can count that as a controller, it would be the Kinect. That's the... Uh, uh, controller where I mean, at this point you should have no problem doing that because Xbox is trying to count the portal uh, as a fucking console. So, I mean, PlayStation Plus, is trying yeah. to define the portal as a console. Yeah, no, no, it was it was the Connect. Connect was really, really uh, like when that thing came out in the, the the first round of games we were playing. I, I it was so big that I bought like one for each of my cousins. We were doing Connect Sports. We were doing the. Uh, the little exercise game, the dance central. Yeah, I would say, even though I, I respect the dual sense, but it's still, you know, a controller does a couple of things here and there um, that makes, that puts it above the, the other controllers that we have. But in terms of where I felt like I was in the future and, and for the time of 2010, I think that's when the Kinect came out. Yeah, I feel like the most advanced controller I've experienced or new way to play a video game was the, was the Kinect, um, for sure. First person shooter. I'm uh, saying Titanfall. I don't know why. Like, mm -hmm. and I know people are going to disagree. Maybe it's just me being biased because I really, really like Titanfall. But like the fact that there's two aspects of a first person shooter mm -hmm. in terms of like walking around, in terms of, you know, the, uh, your, your, your mech or robot or whatever you guys want to call it, like walking around, the fact that you could put it on autopilot. And it could be like a secondary thing. I really enjoyed that. I felt like that was in recent times, and maybe it's because first person shooters have just done so much here recently. Mm -hmm. That was one of the first ones that I felt was so unique in like the direction that the industry should have went. Uh, I can agree with you there. Titanfall. I think when Titanfall uh, first came out, um, especially in those days, it was the most. There, it was like the like at the time, yeah. There was games coming out, but it was like the biggest like, oh, this is different. This this feels different um, because you got to think there's two mechanics. Yeah, you, you you playing as a pilot, 
you playing as a, a Titan. And they both felt accurate. Um, and the concept of the games having, it also was a new way to encourage players, you know, because at the time, you know, Call of Duty, Halo, Battlefield, highly competitive, right? Titanfall gave the other players that like, who maybe who aren't as skilled, you know, like made you feel like you were doing something, you know, by adding the grunts and the AI mixed in with the regular players, you know, uh, the, um, what did they call the human uh, players or what you were, what, what, what the, what were they considered? Does, cause you got the grunts and like, you know, your actual soldier, the one that you're actually controlling. Um, they, they had different cat. They were considered a different category versus, uh, the regular grunts and like army guys. So you had those, you had the, you know, the Titan, which you could set to all by to follow you around and to defend areas and whatnot, or you can go into it and control it. Um, Titanfall was dope. The original, like, I still like the first Titanfall over the Titanfall 2. Titanfall 2, the only yeah. good thing about Titanfall 2 was the campaign, but I feel like for some reason, I feel like the multiplayer took a step back. Um, I think it's because they try to make it more class based and just mm -hmm. not titan base like you could have a class based sensation on it but i felt like they tried to do too much with it yeah so titanfall i can agree that was where i felt like i was playing something new that we never experienced before um console which the console? 360 yeah yeah, the the 360, it's it just you know, and I I get it. Bond's probably gonna call me like a 3D gamer, and that's fine. That that's fair. But when I was playing like online to that to that degree, because obviously there's online before then, but yeah, that was the first time I felt like I was part of a community, not necessarily just online. Yeah, I'm gonna say the Xbox 360 as well. Now it would be the original Xbox, but I never owned the original Xbox. Now I had experience during the lunch days where I thought. Yo, this is different. This looks better than anything. Everything at that time, I thought everything looked realistic at, uh, playing on Xbox. But when it came to the 360, from like coming off of PS2 and GameCube and then jumping into the 360, and then um, the stuff that you're able to do, the online, you know, uh, uh, marketplace and uh, having friends, it was, I felt like, Oh, this is like remember people forget what was like the was in at that time. MySpace was very popular and Facebook was just coming in at that time. So Xbox 360 was like the gaming version of that stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Um and yeah, I had I felt like I was I was experiencing something, you know, revolutionary when the 360 first came out and it'd be there day one. Yeah, it was definitely an awesome um experience. So I would say the console, I would agree. Action adventure game. Last of Us Part Two. Like just s s some of the direction they took that gameplay with is just like I still haven't seen the type of detail that was in that game already it's to this day. Like it, it just it's insane the amount of like detail went in there, the amount of combat that was in there. It, it's just the mm -hmm. whole thing is kind of crazy. Okay, that's a uh, action adventure is very very broad. That's a whole lot of games. I'm trying to think. I have to make sure which action adventure game that I thought was like. I'm I gonna... think the way that you should answer this is what action adventure game that you played mm -hmm. that you was like this is the new bar. Like they need this bar. Every action adventure game, this is the degree they need to play. I'm not going to hold you. I think the one that I made me feel like that, this is going to be an odd one. This is going to be an odd one. Are you going to say Rise Center Row? Mm-mm. I don't know. I thought. Oh. Until Dawn. You really think that's an action it, adventure it, But that's game? the thing. Is that, is, what do you, would you consider that? Because I thought they were doing next level stuff visually and obviously storytelling uh, and interactivity. But again, if that's not considered but an I, action adventure. I would consider that an action adventure game. Okay, then, I mean, Last of Us, it's, I, I think Last of Us hits the bar in terms of graphical fidelity and, and detail, which is. But the, the gameplay was crazy, too. You don't remember that gameplay? Yeah, I mean, I remember it, but I just, <laughs> oh, man, like, I give, uh, I do give the Last of Us part two it, its flowers of being like, I call it the greatest game I don't want to play again. Um. You know, I could probably I can give that to The Last of Us Part Two as well. 
I that, like that's fair. That's fair. I can do that. Um, multiplayer mode. We didn't didn't we just first person shooter multiplayer? I feel like well, we picked uh, the game. It just so happens that Titanfall was a multiplayer game. Um, it I, takes I two I, and and a ways out. I'll get. Ah, I, I, you're right. Oh man, yeah, not yeah, yeah. I think a ways out. I, I, I like the a ways out scenario. I think that did uh, that was really really great. But you know, I'm gonna do this one. No, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go back. The one where I felt like, yo, this is in a sad because we've never seen it again. Gears of War two, uh, captured a meat flag. Capture. I forgot what they called it. Captured a. You had a. It was. It was like. It was like captured a flag, and um, you had to capture a, um, a pretty much a bum. I forgot what they called them in Gears of War, but he was strapped with a shotgun. And um, I think the person that voices is is Ice Ice T Griffin or whatever his name is. But you, the the flag is essentially just a, a AI player, right? With a with a shotgun, and you it's you had to one could that the guy get to defend himself. He could he could down you. It is a person whoever captures that meat flag to their base. Obviously, they uh, uh, went around and so on. To I think it's up to three rounds. But the made that thing that made that thing so cool is that you had it was one of the first modes where you had to worry about. It was like PVE plus PVP, right? It, in a, in a, a weird scenario, it was both of us. You got to fight whoever you got to fight off, uh, so you can defend yourself. Obviously, you got to fight the other team, but you also had to fight the flag. And then once you down them, you couldn't pick up the flag until you downed them, and you pick them up, and you got to carry them uh, to the flag. And everybody particular is that only existed in one game. It was in Gears Two, and it was the, it was the best mode. It was my favorite mode in all of Gears of War. Uh, capturing the meat flag, I, I believe it had a, a better name than that, but it didn't make its way in Gears Three. Uh, I don't think they put it. It just in wasn't the, popular enough. Yeah, probably not. But it was a good ass mode. It was a really really good mode. All right, so uh, we had uh, that's it for the Patreon questions. Shout out to everybody, uh, keep them coming. Dude, these were some good questions this week. Uh, let's talk about the uh, let's talk about a did last week, no, GTA happened this week, GTA yeah. uh, six. Uh, they wanted to show it on Tuesday, unfortunately, somebody from YouTube leaked it on Monday, and um. And it's it's one of the most viewed uh, trailers of all, like all time, especially in uh, gaming. It's taking place in Miami. You're playing as a female protagonist, and the the big hype about this trailer is not one. It looks obviously it looks great, uh, graphical fidelity, but it was just so how accurate of like the events that typically occur in Miami and stuff that was reported on the news and stuff like that. What was your? Did you see where they they did the uh the one where the dude was on bath salts eating people? Like yeah. he had his own little part in the the trailer. Yeah, yeah. They they did a they did a lot. They got their twerking animations are on point. Um, <laughs> that's an understatement. Yeah, it's like they they did their research and um the one thing we were all worried about was like how could a Grand Theft Auto game release in today's era. And they did Easy, it accurately. They don't care. They don't care. Like, which is, it's fine. They did. They did a good. They good. Good job. It's coming out twenty twenty five, man. What do you think of this? I think um, first off, people that are getting upset with them, that I just don't understand. Like, people want them to do stuff, but they don't. I never understood where it's like people want the the devs to have creative freedom. But when it comes to the creative freedom part, they try to take it away. Well, it's only creative freedom if if I believe in the way it should be done. And it's like, look, like GTA's always been like this. GTA is literally a parody to to how shit runs in the, in America. Like that that's literally how it is. And like people saying this is woke, that woke is is switching something up to to fit a narrative, like a certain narrative. This isn't woke. The, the, this, to, if anything, I felt like this is a parody off of wokeness, off of the people that attack people going woke. Like they, I felt like everyone was getting was getting the uh, the work on here. Like, look, like 
That, that's why I don't understand when people say Fable went woke. Like, have you ever played Fable? Fable was like one of the most... Fable was woke before woke happened. And it's just like, you know, when it comes down to this, it's just like, this is how it is. And, you know, if you don't like these type of games, don't play it. Uh, GTA is going to come out there. It's going to make billions of dollars in the first week. And uh, there is not a damn thing no one on the internet can do to stop it. Because that's just how it is. You know, GTA is such a conglomerate brand. I think you're muted smooth. It's such yeah. a huge brand that, you know, there's there's literally nothing no one can do about it. Yeah, uh, GTA is like, uh, does it claim to what, 2025, Gotti? Or <laughs> like... Like, what do devs do? Do they push their game up, push it back? Like, that's a uh, hopefully 2025 is a good year. But um, the thing is, is that now with the concerns is they only gave 2025. So it's not like end of or beginning of who knows. And then you got to factor in probably a holiday. It's probably going to get delayed probably twice. And uh, when's the PC release come out? I don't think it's going to get delayed. You don't I, think don't so? th- I think it comes out 2025. Here's the thing. The amount of time they've had, mm-hmm. I don't see that game getting. I I see, you know, if they would have said twenty twenty four, I would say yeah, it's getting delayed. But they gave you almost a, a year and a half window. To me, that game's coming out that day, okay. that year. That year. Uh, what about the PC release? Did they make they comment on that? Because I have to think out. Uh, I've only seen the Xbox and PS five uh, logos. I don't think that that. Uh, you you know how that is. Uh, we have to see exactly how things go when it comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious of like, if it's going to be launching with a new generation of online multiplayer, is that going to be the same year or is that like, you know, another year out? Probably three months after mm-hmm. or a month after. Cause um, I think they'll do the same thing. They'll say, yo, you know, we, we are going to have that multiplayer experience, but you're going to have to wait for that. We want you not only, you know, give their time, their devs a little bit more time to work on it and make sure it's bug free, mm-hmm. but to also, you know, do more tests on stress testing and, and just, you know, force your players to actually play the the single player you spent millions of dollars making too. So, okay. No, fair enough. Uh, so with that being said, uh, there was also obviously the Game Awards took place this past Thursday, and um, two games didn't win nothing, right? Uh, Zelda and Spider Man. No, Zelda won. It did won one reward. Which one? That is it. I, I think it was Action Adventure or something like oh, that. Oh, okay. And Baldur's Gate won everything else it was nominated for. Uh, yeah. Uh, people denied the Xbox tax because Xbox walked away with three awards: two for uh, Forza, one for Hi-Fi Rush. Is that a, is that correct? Yes, but just because that happens, people sitting there acting like no one. Here's the thing: I'm getting so sick and tired of people acting like when we set Xbox tax, we are acting like the whole industry is coming together and saying there's like some giant conspiracy with the with Microsoft. No, no one ever said that. We said that there's a certain people in media that have prominent positions in the industry that don't like Xbox and they and they use their power to to shit on Xbox whenever they can. Yeah. Uh, it has nothing to do with this game did this, this game did that. Like that's what my version of Xbox uh taxes. Now, there are people out there, uh you know, people probably uh deserve some medication. Uh, they believe that there's a giant conspiracy going on. Yeah. And 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 I don't think that I, I I think that the amount of the amount of what's what the amount of part of the industry that would have to work together for something like that to be genuine mm-hmm. is not realistic. Hey, I mean, you may, I, I I again I believe that the the Xbox tax is 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 for real for real in in all aspects. Um, but like this award show didn't make a like a, you know. A, you know a difference i feel like the games that did win awards from xbox were rightfully so i don't i think they won awards in areas that they weren't outclassed in um like hi-fi rush anything that had to do with like sound or uh or you know audio or even soundtrack i think that's that was a given uh forza accessibility 
in sports. I mean, outside of sports is the only unique one in the sports scenarios, like your FIFAs, your NBAs and stuff like that. Kind of like rinse, wash, repeat. Nothing really changes year to year. Um, the accessibility, I always anticipate an Xbox game to uh, win that award because they always go the next, the extra step uh, to include accessibility features, whether it's uh, uh, audio, whether it's, you know, things you can see, whether it's hardware, they pretty much always take the next step and and, and try to, uh, with this uh, whole inclusion of movement that they got. So, yeah, Xbox is obviously missing the, like, the, like I feel like uh, things where, you know, I want to see Xbox step up and, and really get their due is obviously game of the year, best game direction and, and, and best, um, action adventure and performance stuff like that those are uh things where uh that gets the those are the uh, awards that if you're nominated for that then you're nominated for game of the year right so um but this year's like awards man um again attic i, I know you got to do a live reaction I, I only got to watch like a chunk of it i kind of got to see the things that i wanted to see um but again it's like you know, we know Christopher, you know, Judge took some shots at Call of Duty with a speech. What was your take on that, man? It's just a, like, it's like if the devs can't make little harmless jabs at each other, like, it'd be different if he was saying something that was like not well known. But like, everyone has said that. Everyone has said the Call of Duty this year mm -hmm. is like very, you know, short. So it's not like he went on this and all the, uh, you know, the developers are, are pieces of shit for doing mm. this. He just said, yo, my speech is longer than that game. And, and like, to me, like, they should be able to do that. Like, we should be in an industry where industry people can take little funny shots at people without being worried that everyone's going to get upset over it. Because it's like, to me, he wasn't disrespectful. He just... Well, he just did a little joke. It, and what's funny is the same industry people that are saying this shouldn't be done are the same people that are constantly clowning on other content creators. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think I think it's funny, but again, it's like people um it, it, it just goes to show you that like, you know, people don't appreciate the lip lip service, you know what I mean? It and then again, there was no harm, no foul. I don't think like Christopher Judge, you know, did anything wrong. It was a joke that this stuff happens, you know what I mean? Um, at award shows all the time. Just the only time it really became a problem is when Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. Um, but uh, this is uh, this is obviously nothing to that uh, magnitude. But I do like seeing the banter. I do like seeing devs go at each other. I really do. Like, yeah, because uh, it's not like it was. It was a malice. It was just a joke. Yeah. He even he even joked about himself before that. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's just like it, it makes me dis disappointed that like I'm seeing all of these like influencers and stuff speak out against it, and it's just like, dude, mm -hmm. like it's a joke. Like, and then people wonder why comedy is going away. It's like you mean to tell me that a developer can't come up there? Well, not even a developer, mm -hmm. a voice actor can't come up there and say, yo. My speech last year was longer than your game. Ha 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 ha. And then walk off the mm -hmm. stage. But then they, they're the same people that's saying that comedy's going going away and they act like they don't know why. Yeah, because people are sitting there at get blowing it out of proportion. Yeah. You know, he didn't attack anyone specifically. He didn't say, oh, they, you know, they, they shouldn't have done that. He just joked about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it was, it was a joke, but like you know, now people are coming out on Twitter. But remember, it's it's a slow it's a slow uh news cycle, so the coverage has to come. I expected like like people to talk about it, and there's gonna be the fake outrage about it and whatnot. Um, that's going to follow because, like I said, the clicks are there for it. Um, the uh, so. Baldur's Gate, you know, walked away with all the essentially all the uh, awards that most majority of the awards that it was nominated for. Uh, did they, for, dude? And this is the part I missed the announcement, but from what I saw on Twitter or heard on Twitter, because I didn't see anything, it looked like he said he forgot. Did they forget like the, the announcement for Xbox? Like, how did we find out was find out was coming? Because if he forget, if he forgot, I, I do think that there's a reason for that mm -hmm. i do think because they were rushing people off the stage so much and probably the emotion of winning it maybe he planned on saying it during the speech of 
of winning game of the year. Uh, but they were rushing people off every time one of the Boulders Gate people went up there. Mm -hmm. That music played in like 10 seconds. So, you know, I, I'm, I, I don't put it in all like they did that stuff on purpose. It's like, I do believe that they intended on saying it, but the amount of stuff going on on that stage, the amount of issues that the video game awards happened, I just think it slipped their mind. So, uh, how did they, how did we find out, or did the Xbox had to tweet it? Or it you know, Xbox tweeted, and so did uh, so did the studio, uh, the people that made Boulder's Gate. Mm -hmm. They tweeted it like right after the show. <laughs> okay, yeah, it would have been announced. Uh, nice if they would have announced it. So I'm gonna, no thanks to you, I'm going to download the game and see if this is something I keep up with. Did you beat this game on PC? No, but I have like sixty hours in it or something like mm -hmm. that. Okay. Because I, I started playing it, but there was a, just a lot of stuff going on, and I didn't get a chance. And I, and this is the kind of game I like to play with other people, because I, I just think it makes it such a better experience. Wait, it's a multiplayer game? Yeah. Oh, so you can teach me? All right, then I can play with you. Cause I was, all right. You, you can play up to four people. Okay. Okay. Me and King are going to play. I want to know how that works, though. So. Um... Well, it, it's it's a turn-based game, though. Okay. It's I tried to get you to play one of their other games, Definity or uh, Original Sin. Oh, okay. Okay. I think you actually played the first one for like for a very short amount of time very and you short. refused to play anymore. Uh, you know, all right, I'm going to I'm going to try it. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to try. I got to I got to warm up. I have to diversify my appetite for video games again. Um, and it's just that I don't know, man. I I don't know. All right, I so, just think that you get you in your mind you're not going to like something. Mm -hmm. You're like my brother when it comes to food. My brother refuses to try anything new when it comes to food. But when he does try them, he likes it. And uh, my my brother's a lot... He, I think you're a lot better than my brother in, in that in matter when it comes to games. Mm -hmm. I got my brother to try finals out, and now he plays it all the time. Oh, okay. I still haven't touched finals. Is, is this... that is that only... Is that on PC? Is it, or is this... It's out everywhere now. Oh, okay. Okay. They it, it was announced on the VGA. Okay. All right. Well, then I'll give it a try. Now, um, it, it's it's one of those multiplayer uh, first person shooters with a twist, right? Like, yeah, it's pretty much a, a game show. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So let's uh get into the other than the obvious game which we're going to talk about what were your or your favorite reveals uh the i like the the game that super mass is making on um on the dead by daylight franchise super massive is the people that made until dawn mm -hmm. uh, i'm a real fan of their their company i liked a couple of i like the fact that mana a mana mm -hmm. games on xbox now yeah that 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 was surprising. I I expected it to say only PlayStation and Switch and, and PC, but it said Xbox up there. So that's a good thing. That's a Square Enix game. Yeah, Square Enix. If I remember correctly. Yeah. So we're getting somewhere on that. Uh, you know, obviously I really like the Blade uh, one. And you know, I, I don't know if I, I'm pretty sure we're gonna talk about it. But you know, are we gonna talk about Hellblade. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I like Hellblade. I thought you know, even though I probably won't play it because that game just. I can't. I have a hard time playing it. I think I'm gonna try to play it without the earphones. Yeah, why don't you just play it on? Let it just play through the speakers. Yeah, I think I'm gonna play it without the earphones. Uh, you know, I might stream it too. I don't know because I'm making a new streaming channel. Okay. Yeah, like so. So you haven't finished Hellblade? No, never. Right. I'm have. still. I'm still one uh, achievement shy of the 100% completion. This is one collection collectible. I me and like a 99% of everybody else keep missing. Um, but Hellblade 2, again, looks good. Uh, I, I've seen people try to dismiss it for some reason. I don't know what it is, but graphically- said it looks too, like the, too much like the first one I was seeing people say. Oh, I mean, I don't know why. I mean, I feel like in this game, she looks uh, m more human-like. Um, but in terms of when I, the only thing I would agree about there is not more so graphically. I feel like graphically, it looks like a next generation game. It's more so the concept in in in, in gameplay cycle, right? That's why I, I get fear because you got to think about all the time, 
from we saw the initial reveal, which was like that crazy trailer of the her singing, whatever. The next one was the first gameplay, which the the running, throwing, walking simulator where she's throwing the spares at that giant, um, which I thought looked good for the, uh, that time too. That showed a little bit of the combat. It wasn't like really flea from it was, it's, but it seemed like it was on rails, more so scripted or whatever. Uh, but I don't know. Um, the next one was that little segment at the showcase last year, which I didn't appreciate because it didn't really show us anything. Um, yeah, and- I feel like they. Um, the, I feel like the one this year was just useless. Like they shouldn't have had that at all. At the showcase or the one at the game awards. The one at the showcase. This yeah, year. I feel like what they could have done, they should have showed what they showed at the Game Awards today at the showcase, and it would have been a better showing. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm looking forward to Hellblade, but I need to see. I need them to just play the game for like ten minutes, dude. Um, and I it, think you're going to see that in their like directs. I, yeah. I think. Yeah. I'm with yeah. You. So that that's what I think. You said you think we'll see that in their next direct. Yeah, I think you'll see in depth in the next direct. Okay. Speaking of uh, direct, I'm trying to think the of uh, when we got the January direct direct announcement. Was it in December or was it in January? Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of unsure. Like I think it was I think it was early January. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, Hellblade like, again looks good. Uh, they still didn't give us a release date. It's still out in 2024. Uh, where we say this game lands, man, is this a Q1, Q2, or a Q3, Q4 game? I think it'll come in the middle of the year. Middle of the year, okay. Um, yeah, maybe it'll even be a holiday game. I, I don't know. I, it just depends on you know exactly what else they have next year. Mm-hmm. If they can move something a holiday, because they're gonna want to have something holiday, and if they don't have nothing ready, this would be the next best thing. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, so we had Hellblade. Looks good. Um, I do. I don't know when it's coming out. Do you? My thing. I'm trying to figure out which one is further along. Right? Is it Avowed or or is it or is it Hellblade? <laughs> like, which one is likely to come first? Uh, Hellblade. And, and the reason I said Hellblade is because every time they refer to games coming out soon. Hellblade's mm-hmm. always on that list. Uh, Phil Spencer did it. Yeah. Matt Booty did it. Where they're talking about the next games coming up. Hellblade's always one of the games they bring up. Yeah, you know, um, I think we'll see Avowed next year sometime. Next year, I just don't know. Maybe it could Avowed could be an early twenty twenty five game too, like January February. <laughs> uh, you know, we'll just have to see. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at. I'm, I'm curious to see what their um, lineups look like uh, for uh, for 2024. I know last year, obviously, it was Towerborn, um, Hellblade, Avowed, and uh, and um, Flight Sim, and then of course Stalker. Uh, and I just want to saw uh, if it's still going to be that when you still got to consider things that were leaked but wasn't quite announced, things that are expected like Indiana Jones, Doom. Um, and then the remasters of Oblivion and Fallout 3. Um, so I don't know if you got any more information on those items, but uh, say that again. Sorry, someone uh, sent me a message. Oblivion and Fallout 3 remasters, and I Indiana think you could Jones. see Oblivion's definitely a next year game. I could definitely see that. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm curious to watch next year. Keely decides he's going to make a, a remake category next year. Uh, yeah. And he's going to take everything out of game of the year. Cause a lot of people consider oblivion, like one of the best games ever made. Mm-hmm. I don't, there's a lot of people that do consider that. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested to see how, when that happens, if there's a change in how things are done next year. Yeah. I would like to see oblivion remade to, to, the, uh, to at least, uh, modernize it right i can i try to go back to it and i I, and i just can't uh um it's just for some reason i just can't stick with it um i've gotten to the point where i don't want to see remakes unless it's like resident evil 4 caliber like because to me it's like you're wasting your mm -hmm. devs time you're wasting everyone's time just do the remake from the ground up or just move on to something else fair enough 
All right, so Attic, I'm looking at my calendar. Before we get into our final uh, topic, I do want to pull up my calendar right quick. Um, yeah, because I got to leave here in like 30 minutes. Oh, yeah, no, we'll be out before then. I want us to do a Planet Xbox Game of the Year show. Um, okay. And we got, we either do it the 30th or the, we could do it the, the right uh, right before Christmas the 23rd or the 30th, which is right before the New Year. Which one would you like to? You know what we should do? What's we, that? We, should, we should do a Weapon Will and Planet Xbox One, like together. A Weapon Will and Planet Xbox. I don't know when Weapon Will is coming back. Remember no, I'm talking. I'm just talking about getting everyone's like game of the year oh, stuff together. Okay, yeah, fair enough. But the reason why I said playing Xbox is it would have been playing Xbox game of the year. It's it, it's kind of congested it down. When you include Weapon Will, it has to now be has to be a broad a broader show. No, so it, I mean, in that case, like I'm kind of like interested, like your mindset on that. Like, mm-hmm. it, it, are you just trying to like? To me, I, I don't see the uh, the problem in, in like welcoming more opinions. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because if it's just us two, it's mm-hmm. I don't. No, no, I don't. Because... We can add more people. I'm just saying. But once it, if it's like Weapon World, then it, it can't. Then it's not going to be a Planet Xbox game of the year. It's going to be a just a general game of the year. You know what I mean? Well, like, I, I, I would call it the uh, like mm-hmm. your your Patreon game of the year or something like everyone on the Patreon. I mean, we'll figure it out. We'll we got uh, you know a couple weeks, but let's uh, get on to the one that you know everybody's been teasing and, and anticipating. Everybody was anticipating Xbox reveals. We got two uh, major reveals because I don't really count Hellblade. It's just that we saw it again. Um, but the first one's uh, Ko, uh, Kojima's game, which is OD, aka Overdose. Um, and he's partnering with that creepy dude that wrote Get Out and uh, This Is Us and Nope, uh, Jordan Peele. I, I didn't know he made those until just now. Are you so. serious? No, nah, I don't keep track of like Hollywood like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's creepy, dude. He's my, that's why, that's what it makes me not, I don't even know if I would want to play the game with his involvement in it. Cause I was like, you got to be a sick, sick dude to write the movies that he wrote. And um and and just to have him on the interactive portion, it, it's gonna be a mind fuck. So, um, so OD Kojima, the game looks fantastic on a graphical side, um, but again, it's gonna be one of those experiments, you know, that Kojima likes to do, where we gotta find the gameplay loop and the fun in it. You know, you know, we figured out what Death Stranding was. Some people love it, some people hate it. And that, and I think OD. The thing I didn't like about with the OD is that they said, you know, it is a game, but you know, it's also like a movie. And it's like, I feel like I've I've done those. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of those games. Like, there's Late Shift, uh, uh, those those interactive movies. I don't want an interactive movie, so I'm trying to see how big of a deal. And now I want to know how the cloud is going to play into it. And it's supposed to be powered by Unreal Engine Five. Visually, you can see that, but. I don't know. I mean, I'm gl- I'm glad Xbox was able to you know strike a deal with the industry's hottest uh, developer and and get an IP out of them, and they're they're funding it. It, it looks good. Uh, looking forward to learning more about it. One thing about Kojima, he can get games out pretty quick after announcing them. Like I feel like Death Stranding came out what feels like two or three years after it's been announced. So. Um, I, I feel like Death Stranding took a minute to come out. I don't know why. I felt we like see, we, maybe it's just because we've seen it a lot. We've seen it a lot. That's a problem. We saw it a lot, and we never knew what it was about. But uh, between, I think we first seen Death Stranding when this all this stuff happened with like uh, Konami and PlayStation signed them on. What was it, 2016 or 2017? I, I, I feel like it was either 2016 or 2017. And the game was out in 2019. But however, from that time, we've seen it every year at every event, though. Uh, for the I next... couldn't tell you, to be honest with you. Hmm? I said, I don't know. Um, uh, uh, what do you think? What? About that? About OD? Yeah, what do you think about OD? I, I think it's, I don't know if I, it's going to be something that I fall in love with. It, like I said, I, I'm probably, I'm not going to play it. I can already tell you that. <laughs> and, and if I play it, it's going to be very, I think it's not going to be very long. It just didn't seem like, my thing is just like, first off, why was this game here? It didn't mm-hmm. show anything. They didn't really do anything. Like, 
And this is one of those things where it's like, you know, a lot why a lot of the developers are mad in the industry. It's like you rush people off stage, but you get Kojima like 15 minutes yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, and it would be different if it was something relevant, but it really wasn't. He went on there and wasted everyone's time for like kind of no reason. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I understand why people are upset over it. It's just like, look, Kojima, because that's a, one of those things where it's like, even if people in the room were telling Kojima, uh, to, uh, Jeff Keighley, you know, uh, this is a lot of space and they were cutting stuff, he wouldn't cut stuff because of his relationship with them. Yeah. And it's just like, and I personally felt like it hurt the show. It's like, look, I'm not saying that this game's not going to be good. I'm sure it will be good Yeah. Uh, to some degree to, to a lot of people, but... You know, this is something that didn't need to be played right now. It just didn't. It, it could have waited. Fair enough. And then the biggest, I think this might have, and correct me if I'm wrong, was this the last reveal, uh, which was... Uh, Monster Hunter. Oh, that was the last one? I'm pretty sure it was. Okay. So the, the biggest one we were anticipating as Xbox fans was the rumored Arcane game. And... No, it was, that was like middle of the show. Oh, damn. So I, just to give you a heads up, I stopped watching after the... Uh, arcane reveal yeah it was like the middle of the okay. show okay um so they've revealed arcane revealed their next game it's not dishonored three it's not death loop two it was marvel's blade um uh, the, the trailer was cool people had questions about the graphical art style uh they uh confirmed it's in partnership with marvel uh, they did confirm for the first time a Bethesda studio. Uh, is well, I can't say for the first time, uh, but it, it's a third person action, um, adventure game and it's set in Paris. Uh, now after this reveal, you know, it was met with three logos Marvel, of course, Arcane, of course, they're the developers, and Bethesda. There is no Xbox logo to be in sight. No Series X and S. No Game Pass. I don't even think there was an Xbox Game Studios logo or anything like that associated with it mm -hmm. at all. So with that, it you know pushed people to like, hey, so what's going on with this? Clobro got really upset about it because he you know believes that Microsoft is afraid to stamp their their branding on you know on anything popular that can help the brand and you know i very much agree with him in terms of, of that you know how i feel about xbox and their marketing efforts and i feel like so the thing is people are at we had that whole report from tim stewart um about you know wanting to put games on playstation and all this other crap and then you got people you know running with the narrative that xbox is going to go third party and then the whole as dust falls Thing came out like a uh, uh, and they was like, oh, this is the first sign. Even though it was an Xbox Global Publishing game, wasn't really a, a game made by Xbox Studios. It's like Interior Night made it. They struck struck a deal with Xbox. I don't know who owns the IP, but it's coming out of PlayStation. But but some people believe because as this falls going to PlayStation it means Xbox is going third party. I don't know, but um, which is funny because there's plenty of PlayStation games that uh, that that dropped the, uh, you know, it's only on one platform. Like mm -hmm. it, this isn't nothing new. Yeah. People forget about feels like people highlight it when it's Xbox, they yeah. don't highlight all the PlayStation timed exclusives going to the other platform. Yeah. Like roller drum, roller drum just dropped into play, uh, Xbox game pass quietly like last week. And that was at, that was a state of, uh, a state of play exclusive from PlayStation. And that released on PlayStation, uh, earlier this year. Uh, remember what the whole situation with Godfall? Uh, what's the game? Uh, uh, Bug Snacks. I can remember that. Like it happens on both ends. We're still waiting for Kenna. Um, but people, for some reason, when it's Xbox Stray, people forget about Stray. Um, but uh, and, and, and people also forget it, it's happened. Like the Ascent eventually went to PlayStation. Twelve Minutes, which was an exclusive, eventually went to uh PlayStation. Uh, what's the girl with uh that can talk to like spirits? Uh, what's her name? Oh my god, uh, it came out. Oh my god, I can't. And I and I like this game so much, I can't. The medium, medium the medium eventually went to PlayStation and whatnot. So my thing is, uh, uh, when I start seeing Gears and Halo, one of those two mm -hmm. hit hit PlayStation, then I'd be like, okay, it's a wrap. Yeah, it's, any of their tempo IPs hit PlayStation, then you can buy. Okay. 
if if I see Star, even Starfield, even though you know Starfield definitely probably didn't you know do as much as uh, as well as the industry thought it was going to do, mm-hmm. even if I saw that game, like here's my thing, like regardless what you think, they have done nothing but say and show that their games are exclusive. Sure, some of them are different depending on relationships they have or depending on the 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 deal they made at the time with the people who own the the IPs at that time, mm-hmm. but that that's not everything. And, and to me it's like they want to ignore the six or seven incidences where a game has went exclusive, mm-hmm. bleeding edge, even though if you didn't like that, you know, uh Starfield, what well, what's another Bethesda game? Yeah, you know they they uh, they've already said Oh, Redfall. <laughs> Redfall. Hi-Fi like, Rush. <laughs> Hi-Fi Rush. Like, even though people... And then you got Hellblade 2. Remember, Hellblade 2 is going to be yeah. on, on everything. Mm-hmm. It's like... It, it feel, it, this is this is Xbox's fault. Like, a lot of it is Xbox's fault because if Xbox would just come out and say, this is our shit, and if it's not coming to your platform, we'll tell you. Yeah. But until we say otherwise, it's our shit. But the problem is, is Microsoft doesn't make the, those statements. Uh, they're very wishy-washy on what they're going to do of what, what, with what. If they came out and they said very openly when they bought Bethesda, if Phil didn't sit there and say it goes by case by case, and he just said no, all their stuff is on our platform, there would be no question. Remember when Bethesda was first bought and Phil said from case to case, meaning the majority of them are going to be exclusive. When Activision was first announced, bought, people assumed everything was going to be exclusive yeah. because of the Bethesda deal. Mm-hmm. But when you go out there and you and you don't put your logo on stuff, what do you expect people to say? When you give certain games to the competition but not other games, what do you expect people to say? Until Microsoft takes the initiative to put their name on shit, people are always going to speculate. Oh, man. You're you're absolutely right. At it, but I do got a question for you. I'm, looking, I'm checking your background and your desk. Where's your Xbox, dude? All I see is a PC and a PlayStation. <laughs> it is in my room. Where is it? It's in my room. Oh, you oh you don't play that your setup? No, it's just whatever I, I I'm recording gameplay from. Oh, like I'm, I'm playing something. I can't say what I'm playing on, on this. Um, like right now, I'm not playing it, but uh, I'm I'm reviewing a game on this that I need gameplay. Uh, and until I get like a long HDMI cord. I can't record in my room. So whatever I'm recording or streaming, uh, if it's here, it's because of that reason. Okay, just want to know. You know what I mean? <laughs> just checking. Um, no, you're right, man. Um, I'm, I am i don't like that. I don't care. Like, my thing is, is I wish... I don't understand why Xbox can't be as bullish as PlayStation um, is when it comes to, like... And, and in this case, it's like, and, yo... And, the, Real quick, it, you know, I get people are saying, well, addict is because, you know, the media always comes down on them with like uh, anything goes exclusive. It's like, why can't it's because Microsoft allows them to yeah. if Microsoft from day one was like, this is how we roll. This is our business model. There would be no media saying that because it's nothing normal. Yeah, it, it's nothing out normal. It happens every time. But when you give. The illusion that this is how you roll and you keep changing it up, people are going to be confused on what you're doing. Yeah, man. Um, the thing is, the Cinemax deal has been done and gone. The Cinemax deal is not under scrutiny or review. Um, they kind of made it like uh, pretty clear. And it, it, it's okay, man. It's like you're in a situation where you're getting your face beat in by the competition because they have exclusives that they can have and not feel anything about it no remorse they don't get questioned about it and um i don't understand how that works and i feel like i don't care who it is microsoft and bethesda are in a a merger microsoft owns bethesda like so anything they release is going to go to xbox regardless you put that xbox logo exclusive or not that xbox logo is on there uh it's something that people would was requesting it's something that xbox felt they had to uh had to do it's like hey you know, you're losing out on to, you know, Square Enix got some stuff, some a Marvel Disney deal. Uh, PlayStation got exclusive uh, Marvel Disney deals and you, you you don't want in on that. So um, this was that, you know, moment and it was bittersweet because they did. They didn't say, you know, it's a, a, a coming soon to Xbox or whatever, like, you know, develop exclusively for Xbox uh, and, uh, you know, Game Pass, whatever. Um, they. Uh, 
it, it, and it's sad and nobody has come out to say it. So right now people are under the suppression that Blade uh, by Arcane is going to be a, a, a multi-plat. My thing is, Attic, what do you, at the end of the day, despite and we've seen Microsoft be wishy-washy, you know, unclear on what they're doing with said games until they damn near release, um, what do you think ultimately happens with Blade? Uh, it's going to be an exclusive. Uh, I'm pretty confident in that. Uh, you know, I knew about a week before the the Blade announcement that Blade was going to be there, mm-hmm. and the same individual that told me that also told me it was an exclusive. Uh, so you know, I do think there is some port stuff that Microsoft's concerned about. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been told that the FTC they're still having conversations with the FTC. Like people need to realize that, you know, Microsoft. Say you know Xbox might not have to worry about the FTC as much anymore, but Microsoft does. Mm-hmm. They're, unless they're never going to buy anything ever again. Yeah. Uh, so you know, I think they're they're trying to keep pe- people happy. Um, I do think there has something to do with the appeal f- uh, process. I don't. I'm not very versatile on that, but I I, I think they don't want to come out there and say, "Yo, we we lock down Blade." as as an exclusive on xbox like right after the abk deal after they after they went on there multiple times and say kumbaya <laughs> like so i think you know i'd be curious on how they move differently once that appeal process is um yeah is, is finished i'm curious to see how long the appeals process i know they had the court thing going on and um I just, they, hopefully they just the thing is the government needs to stop the ftc from like keep doing this because like i said they're wasting and they, uh, they, money. she got roasted by by the government yeah. last time and, yeah. and it's like i guess she feels like she still has a case which you know maybe she does maybe she doesn't but you know i, I think microsoft should have just held the if that is the case and that's the reason they should have just held the announcement yeah shouldn't have done yeah, it. yeah i wouldn't have done it at all i would have just held it for you know the next showcase you got time you know what i mean but um but at that the end of the day should have ended that should have ended their e3 show next yeah. year like, cause yeah. I feel like that would have been a good show ending. Or this year. That's what I meant this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, or this past, yeah. They, yeah. they couldn't have done it this year because that was directly the wrong yeah. time to do yeah. it. Like, if, if if they appeal things right, you know, this next year during their, their thing, it's just like, look, Blade. But it, show, it goes to show you, maybe they got so much stuff in the tuck that mm-hmm. they could show you. A damn blade announcement at the you know, video game also awards. they consider and then i also got to think about this is that sure zenimax is a, a publisher itself like bethesda is a publisher itself so they can prop they can go out and do that and have them announce uh a, a game and it and, and be okay same thing with like activision when activision is like you know I, like activision can announce a game today don't have to announce a platform and be all right so it, 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 I mean I get it I, I I get it until this all this stuff is done with but like um it is disappointing but I am excited at the same time uh to play a blade game I don't know I I don't know when's has there been a blade game because I never played one um I don't know um you'd probably just Google it to see yeah. if there has I don't think it's been like anything severe yeah you know because I've never heard of it. Uh, but you know, and a lot of people like Blade. You know, yeah. Blade is one of those characters that kind of transcended, uh, you know, comics in general. I, I watched Blade one, two, and three. Didn't even know that that dude was a uh, a Marvel character. A, a Marvel character. Yeah. So you know, I I think they'll be fine. I, I, I do. And, and you know, as far as like people say, well, you know, Addict, it's it's a um, it, it's 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 not an exclusive. I'd be very disappointed if it's not. I think it's an exclusive. Me personally. Mm-hmm. Um, I find it hard to believe that Microsoft would go through all these hoops and all this slander and all this criticism for years to get a Marvel character and they get one of the, like, that's E for everyone. I would not, I would be very disappointed with them. I don't think that's the thing that they're going to do, uh, because, you know, it's like King says, it's for the streets and I don't think they want to put, you know, blade for the streets because, if they make a, a, a true third person blade that even could just remotely get on the same level as Spider Man, mm-hmm. it could evolve their brand. Yeah, it can. So I, I'm I'm right there with you, man. But you know, and I also think that they need to try to be involved a little bit in the movie. 
you know, obviously they don't have like, it's just like reach over there. Be like, look, you know, uh, we have invest interest in the video game. We're Microsoft. We got connections. Do you guys need additional funding? Or do you need help reaching out to people you wouldn't normally? Oh yeah, have isn't, to? isn't uh, Shakir Ali? I forgot what his name. Uh, Mayor, because uh, they are working on a movie. Yes, um, and, and that's why I'm like, look, this is so, like, if the movie does okay, the game will do okay. But if the movie is like one of the best Marvel movies that came out in years, mm -hmm. and then like six, seven months later, you're like, yo, there's a Blade movie game coming out. It's going to evolve that the the hypeness for that game. So yeah. to me, if Microsoft can, and if uh, you know the uh, the company that's uh, directing and publishing the movie are willing to listen to them, it's like you know I would drop, I would drop a crazy ass bag. Just give it to them. Look, this is this is the budget we had for Blade's marketing. Take it. Make that mo that movie as best as you can because the better that movie is, the more we're going to sell Blade. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's true. It, it has a triple down effect. You, the more you sell, the, 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 the more hype the movie has, the more successful the movie is, the more su successful the game is, which in theory will be more successful Game Pass would be. Uh, there's a lot they can do with that. Um, but Attic, it's time for us to wrap it up and get out of here. So... Just want to thank everybody for you know viewing the Patreon questions, man. Keep them coming. Uh, I'll have some uh, video posts. I'm probably record a video right after this. And um, please, uh, we'll see you guys. You know, next week. Addy, you got anything going on before we hop out of here? Uh, no, I, I do have a. I do have another channel I'm making. Okay. Um, you know, I'm gonna be streaming more i because I, one of the things i have is i'm always playing these games before embargo but you're not allowed to post them until the embargo lives so i'm just like you know what let's do some let's plays let's some stream because to me as long as uh as long as i do long form gameplay it, it they they kind of intertwine they kind of cross streams there and you know take advantage of shorts more because obviously that channel I'm going to have to run differently than the Xbox review channel I got now. Uh, you know, with that channel, I can put probably more reviews up because that channel is more centric around the gaming part and not necessarily around like information in the industry. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm calling it the uh, Xbox arena. I mean, the addict arena. That's what I'm calling. All right. Got the exclusive on that one. I'm actually also, Working on uh, n another channel myself. Um, Apples and oranges version two. Version two, yeah. It's actually it's, it's gonna be it's gonna it's gonna be uh, me and my wife. I have a name for it. Uh, not ready to put out yet, but uh, it, it's different. Nothing to do with gaming. Uh, but once it's uh, ready, hopefully, like I said, we could we do our first video for it this weekend. Um, but once it's ready, uh, we'll definitely publish. Hoping to get you know support and fast. But uh, yeah, uh, but thank you guys for watching. Uh, tune in. Uh, welcome will every Sunday at uh, 5 p.m. Uh, and tune into Iron Lord's podcast every Sunday uh, at you guys still go at 1 p.m. Not 11, right? Yeah, we we stopped uh, switching because it's like those first couple like the first two months is a little rough, but I've noticed that the, the more and more people's teams lose, the less and less they care about the, the actual game. They'll, yeah. they'll just catch the highlights or watch them both at the same time. Yeah. Like, yeah, absolutely. I didn't realize how many people can watch a football game and not listen to it. I didn't realize that that that's a thing. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You don't have to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, uh, it's, it's been great. We'll see you guys. I'll see you next Sunday um and uh yeah we'll give you guys an update on our game of the year show uh how that goes uh make sure you subscribe to the patreon and uh hit the like button we'll see you guys next week as always xbox is the best box i am the best spot good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe we are out of here peace